Welcome back, everyone, and thank you for joining me again. Stick around to the end if you want to get a little bit of a Cavendish update. But for now, let's talk about proof that the sun is small and local. One of the frequent discussions in the flat versus globe Earth community is about the sun. What is it, how big is it, and how far away is it from the Earth? One claim that flat Earth proponents believe supports their view of the close sun are images such as these. And honestly, on the surface, who can blame them? These images do appear to have light radiating from a centralized point. But now, don't take my word for it. Let's hear from Mr. Thrive and Survive. Hey everybody, we're supposed to thrive and survive. So, what are we looking at here? Well, let me, uh, let me zoom out here if I can a little bit so that you can see that right there. We're looking at outside the picture of an aircraft either facing east or west, obviously. It's either sunrise or sunset here. And what I want to show you here is this is one of the best proofs I have ever seen that the sun is close all in one picture not only do we have a hot spot right here the sun is obviously still above uh, the wing here or this wing is blocking the sun which is perfect for what we need to see here so not only do we have a hot spot which we should not have from the sun 93 million miles away but you have these comfort excuses is what i'm starting to call them that people have to remain in their cognitive dissonance we've shown so many times the sun rays peeking through clouds and people want to make up all kind of excuses it's the slits in the clouds making it look like it's coming through at an angle but it really isn't well here we have uh we have that sort of phenomenon with the the rays coming through but this is different we're here we're looking at, sh at light and shadow if we drew a line you generally have going in like this. Maybe I'll, I'll stick lines over top of this uh, so that we can see this better. But anyway, over here on the right side of where the sun is, we have the angle this way um, moving off to towards us but off towards the right. Here in the center, they're coming right at us or slightly to the right still over here, right at us, right in this part here where we would expect it, where the center part of the sun is, okay, well, that sounds like a pretty solid case for a close and local sun. But let's do a little research of our own, because that's what the flat earthers always want. First, what are crepuscular rays? According to Wikipedia, they are rays of sunlight that appear to radiate from a point in the sky where the sun is located. Despite converging towards the light source, the rays are essentially parallel shafts of sunlight and shadowed particles. Their apparent convergence in the sky is a visual illusion from linear, you know the word, perspective. Well, clearly Wikipedia is part of the conspiracy since they define crepuscular rays to conform with the globe. But as you heard from Mr. Thrive and Survive, the other flat earthers will insist that crepuscular rays are not parallel because clearly by these images they radiate from a local source. Just like these railroad tracks are not parallel and clearly radiate from a local source. Or maybe it's that last word from the Wikipedia definition. What was it again? Oh, oh yes. Perspective. But how about we take a little look at the perspective of crepuscular rays?
As you can see from that demonstration, these rays are parallel, but your location as associated to the rays creates that perspective change. It creates that same appearance as to when you're standing on railroad tracks. Now, if you were to find some way to remove that perspective by, say, going above those parallel lines, such as this image here, clearly these railroad tracks are parallel. If only there were images of crepuscular rays from above. Now, one thing that flat earth believers won't talk about, though, are the anti crepuscular rays. These are the same rays of light, but they're on the opposite horizon. And ironically, they splay out 180 degrees from where the sun appears, and they converge there. But how is this possible if these rays are not parallel? How do they converge on a point on the opposite side of the horizon? Well, maybe these photos are doctored. Or maybe the anti-crepuscular rays are not associated with the crepuscular rays. If only we were able to see crepuscular rays and anti-crepuscular rays at the same time. Maybe then we could understand how perspective affects what we see. Seen that. Hey, can, can somebody hand me the hammer? I think that that video is the last nail in this silly close and local sun coffin. But if that isn't enough for you, Mr. Thrive and Survive, how about we find another analog for parallel lines that look to converge? I wonder if there's any good examples of... Alright, alright, alright. I can't just leave it there. Let's talk about this picture. We all know that these buildings are virtually parallel to each other, yet they appear to be originating from a singular, local source. Now, if we use the flat earth logic, this photograph is clear and definitive proof of a globe. Not only proof of a globe, but a fairly small globe. Otherwise, we should not be able to see the insides of each of these buildings as they splay out. I mean, I could play the let's draw lines on an image game and make it look like the Earth is no more than a mile in diameter, but that doesn't comport with our model or their model. I will contend that this image here is not proof of a ball, just like this image here is not proof of a close and local sun. Both are proof that the human mind is not able to think in 3D space and it does not understand how perspective crafts how we observe the world. And oftentimes, that that perspective is wrong. Thank you again everyone for joining me for this video. Before I get to any other announcements, I'd like to remind everyone that there's currently a GoFundMe for friend of the community, Allison. Or as many of you may know her, off the hook. Recently she had a terrible car accident and she's slowly recovering but she has a lot of bills that she can't cover. Last week, Ragical the Unhallowed Knight did an amazing fundraiser for her, and I apologize that I couldn't be there for it. But if you're able to, please, the link is in the description below. Go see if you can help Allison out. Anything you can do to help is greatly appreciated. And Allison, I wish you a quick and healthy recovery. Now as for the Cavendish experiment, I was hoping that this upcoming weekend I'd be able to do a full run of the test. But last weekend, after my 48-hour test run, I realized that there are still air currents in the building 
that I need to mitigate for that were causing a sway in the wire. So rather than run an experiment this weekend, I've got to make a minor modification to try and mitigate for that draft. That's going to push back the testing a little bit, hopefully not too far. But hey, that's the way of science. Find a problem, fix a problem, test your hypothesis. I'm still at the find my problems phase. It's going to be a little bit longer before I actually get into the test runs, though, because next week I'm making a trip to Hawaii, taking a week off, and meeting back up with my family. So for a little bit, I'm going to unplug as much as I can, enjoy the beach, and my family. Thank you all for coming along on this ride. It's been amazing. So until next time, stay flat. But wait, I've already done that music. I'm not going to end that way. If you're not subscribed to my channel, click here on the icon. It's greatly appreciated. I'm slowly approaching 1,000 subscribers. Hopefully we'll get there sometime soon. And here's two videos that are a little bit older from my archive. Ones that I'm pretty proud of, but have lower view count. So if you haven't seen them yet, I invite you to come take a look. Stay safe out there, you crazy kids.